An IP address is a unique number that identifies each machine connected to the internet. Whether it's a router, printer, smartphone, web server, or any connected device. The series of numbers you see above each machine is their IP address. These IP addresses allow different machines connected to the internet to communicate with each other, much like phone numbers for us. When you want to communicate with someone, you do it through their phone number, which is unique. IP stands for Internet Protocol. As the name suggests, it's a protocol, or in simpler terms, a communication language that allows computers to exchange information on a computer network. Thus, on the Internet, computers communicate with each other through a set of protocols, including the Internet Protocol. Note that the IP protocol is used on the Internet, but not exclusively. The Internet Protocol is also used for exchanging messages between machines on a local network. And this IP protocol uses numerical addresses, called IP addresses. There are two types of IP addresses. The ones we've seen so far are public IP addresses. These are the ones used on the Internet. A public IP address is directly accessible on the Internet. Generally, public IP addresses are held by for-profit organizations. Therefore, there is an identifiable owner for different IP addresses. So, yes, it's possible to trace the origin of a public IP address, especially with organizations that own these public IP addresses, such as Internet service providers, who assign public IP addresses to modems. Now let's talk about private IP addresses. Not all IP addresses are usable on the Internet, and around 600 million addresses are reserved out of the possible 4 billion for specific uses. 15% of IP addresses are not usable. These are addresses within these following ranges you see here. These private addresses are used internally within an organization or by an individual within a private network where each device is assigned a unique private IP address. Private IP addresses allow devices connected to the same network to communicate with each other without connecting to the Internet. These are non-routable addresses on the Internet that anyone can use for their business or home. Next, there's this other unique range of IP addresses. These are routable IP addresses on the Internet, but are used as private addresses for internal use by Internet service providers for large-scale NATs. NAT stands for Network Address Translation, which involves translating IP addresses into other IP addresses. I won't go into details here as I have a dedicated video on this topic. In any case, these are reserved private IP addresses. But how does it work in practice? At home, in your private network, your personal devices each have a private IP address that isn't disclosed when you connect to the Internet. On the other hand, your modem has a private IP address on your local network side and a public IP address on the Internet side. In other words, it's this public IP address that allows your modem and thus your various connected devices to access the Internet. Your modem, acting as a router, handles the proper transmission of data from one network to another, your private network to the Internet and vice versa. However, from the Internet, only one IP address for your devices will be visible. How does this work in real life? This means that from your computer at home, when you want to access a website like wikipedia.org, your browser needs the IP address to contact the right web server hosting the website. But remembering something like 95.145.2.3 is complicated, not to mention all the other IP addresses. That's why today we use domain names like wikipedia.org. However, your web browser still needs to find the IP address of the web server hosting the site to access it. For this, it relies on the domain name system, or DNS to know the IP address associated with the corresponding domain name. And it's this IP address that allows the browser to know which web server to contact. The role of the DNS is simply to associate a domain name with an IP address. Until now, we've seen addresses known as IPv4. In the current IPv4, an IP address is presented in this form, each XX being a number from 0 to 255. I'll spare you the tedious calculations, but... With this type of naming, the number of IPv4 addresses is limited to about 4 billion addresses available. Today, almost all of the Internet's IP addresses have been allocated, and there aren't many left. To address this shortage, 
a new generation of addresses, the IPv6 standard, has emerged. IPv6 addresses are based on hexadecimal notation and have this form. Once again, I'll spare you the tedious calculations, but all this is to say that we'll have approximately 340 sextillion addresses available, 340 followed by 36 zeros. Yes, it's enormous. I don't think we'll have an IP address shortage anytime soon, and IPv6 will be the topic of another video. Today, many ISPs offer both IPv4 and IPv6 internet access simultaneously. If compatible, your equipment probably has an IP address of each type to browse the internet and watch this video.